A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Not everyone in the United States has easy access to mainstream financial services like banking. And in an increasingly cashless economy, not everyone uses plastic. These are some of the patterns fintech entrepreneur Sheena Allen sees for people who are underbanked. She explains how this affects the economy and, ultimately, why it benefits everyone when effective financial services are provided to all communities. I am going to speak on the underserved, being underserved here in America. We're going to talk about the unbanked, which are those who do not have a bank account at all. The underbanked, those who have a bank account, but they still lack access to mainstream financial services, and they rely heavily on the predatory economy. And then there's the working poor, which are those who are living paycheck, to paycheck. Now, here in America, when we think financially underserved, we're probably thinking of people in places like Asia, Africa, South America. We typically don't think of our neighbor, maybe a coworker, or even maybe somebody that we pass walking down the street. Being financially underserved does not always equate to being poor. Right now, there's someone in a rural area in a banking desert, or someone who just simply do not trust banks, who probably has thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars sitting in their home. So once again, they are financially underserved. They don't have adequate access to financial tools and financial services, but they're not poor. Just being financially underserved is much more and much deeper than not just having access to financial services. It's also the lack of financial education, financial knowledge. Because in building, building generational wealth, there's really three steps to doing that. You have number one, which is to get money. You have number two, which is keeping money. And then there's the third step, which is growing money. People who are financially underserved have not been afforded the opportunity and the knowledge to get through the entire process to get the number three. Talent may be evenly distributed, but opportunity and access is not. And then there's a third thing. Would you be surprised to know that there's no Wells Fargo in the state of Louisiana? Usually, in these areas, you have a regional bank, you have a credit union, you have a community bank, or the reality of it, there are certain like locations that don't have a bank at all, which is what we know as a banking desert. So I want to speak actually on one particular area, a location here in America, and that's Terry, Mississippi. Terry, Mississippi, is a small town within the metropolitan area of Jackson, Mississippi, which is in central Mississippi. If you ever visit Jackson, Mississippi, there's a few things I guarantee you that you will see. You'll see plenty of payday lenders. You'll see plenty of check cashing places, plenty of pawn shops, and plenty of title loan options. Being there, most people there are financially underserved because they lack access to financial opportunity. Frankie White is my great grandmother. She's the seed to the flower that you see today. <laughs> my great grandmother had a second grade education. She worked most of, her, most of her life, but she also didn't trust banks. Instead, maybe like some of your grandmothers or great grandmothers. Ms. Frankie White kept her money in her home. So the stories you hear of keeping money in the mattress, in the recliners, maybe even the walls for some people, that was my great grandmother. So I knew, not from research, not from reading, I knew from personal experience what it was like to have people keep money in their homes and not in banks. In 2016, a little over four years after I graduated from college, a little over four years. After I started my very first tech company, I went back home to Mississippi to visit. And what I noticed at the age of 27 that people that were my age, the friends that I grew up with, the people in my community, they were doing the exact same thing in the exact same position that our parents and our grandparents was in. 
They carried cash. They cashed their checks at the convenience stores, at the grocery stores. But there was a huge difference. The difference was, as an economy, we were moving to what we know as a cashless economy. I would take my great-grandmother to pay her light bill in cash, in person. Well, with my generation, we can't pay cash for Netflix. We can't pay cash for Spotify. There's a lot of things now. You walk into restaurants, and some people don't even accept cash in certain restaurants. This problem is so deep that I also want people to understand that this is a life and death situation. You meet someone who gets a title loan, which is when you take the title of your auto, and you use it as collateral to get a loan. And note that 20% of people who get that loan will have their car repossessed because they can't pay it back. Or you have the person that goes to the payday lender, and they're getting charged 400% APR. But when I say it's a difference in life and death, there's someone who didn't really want to get that payday loan, and they knew they probably couldn't afford it, or they couldn't pay it back due to the high interest. But it was the difference in keeping their lights on or off, or either feeding their kids or not. So while some people can take their money, build on it, grow it, there's others who their money is not their money, and the opportunity to build generational wealth is just not there. Now, when people think of financial underserved here in America, you probably think of someone that looks maybe a, a black single mother with kids, maybe a white single uh, female that lives in a trailer in some rural area, which is actually not always the case. This is where the difference comes in, in unemployed and underemployed. Or I've heard things where people say, oh, they should just, just budget better. Well, there are some people who budget because they make a decent amount of money, and then there are some people who are strictly surviving. It's time for us to put the human back into banking. We are humans. We have thoughts. We have feelings. We are not just a number. I say this as an American, a country that I love. But majority of us in this room, we are all just one blink away, and none of us are above being financially underserved. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in San Francisco, California. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx San Francisco. Visit TED.com slash TEDx Shorts to listen to the full talk and learn more about TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.